Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Totterbird. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and other do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to miss any most excellent videos. In front of us we have the Morania. This is a portable AM radio kit by the Four State QRP Group. You can get this radio for a total of $35, plus shipping for me it was around $42.20. This can be ordered on their site with PayPal, and there's an option to pay by check or money order if you're not inclined to pay online with a credit card. Some people still don't like to do that. Also, if you're an international viewer, international shipping is possible, so contact them. I'll have links below to this radio kit and their site, and so you can see the different options there. But this thing is very special to me because you'll see in a moment why I like it so much. Um, let's go ahead and open this box up and see what came in there. All right. See, I saw this on YouTube, and I had to contact them and ask them about this radio kit because I love AM radio, and this is a real special kit to me. So, here's some parts. Go over what was in here. So, everything's real simple, ziplocked, and we'll go over everything. The best part is the enclosure, which is in the bottom here. Pull that out. Got some bubble wrap protecting it. Go over the pieces together, and then talk about build strategy. Box is empty, good deal. Set that aside somewhere. There we go. Okay, first thing first, we got a bag of parts. And I'm gonna bring this down so we can get a little closer view. And they boast uh, 11 components. So we got a speaker um, on the back here. It looks like we have some tuning knobs, some standoffs. We have some wire. Looks like we have to wrap our own antenna. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Totterbert really hasn't wrapped a, a ferrite antenna, but I have wrapped, um, crystal set radio antennas you know we're on a little spider web style let's see what else we got there we got some washer screws to mount the parts together okay so that's a pretty simple bag of stuff next we have another bag of fun let's see what's in this is a block all right so we got some components here i'm just going to grab them and pull them out let's see what we get here so these are our main components we have the tuning capacitor pretty simple um, it's a pretty interesting way they show you soldering these items to the board. I'm going to show you that in a second. But there's that tuning capacitor. We have our volume on off switch. There you go. Very simple, basic setup. Yep, I like that. And then here we have a transformer for our audio amplifying circuit. Very simple setup there, too. Okay. And we got the bag of components. So let's go and open these up. Be careful not to lose any of these. All right, we'll go ahead and just, I think I got them all out of the bag. Set them down here, and let's see what we got. We got a couple, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five disk capacitors, it looks like. Real simple setup here. Just going to kind of show them on the camera, so you can kind of see what this is involves. Pretty basic setup. So, okay, so we got the five plus the bigger one. We got six disk capacitors. I'm going to set those on that plastic bag so we don't lose them. We have an electrolytic capacitor. I think this goes by the amplifier circuit. Um, of course, you know, when you're building your radio, always no polarity on these. Okay. Next, we have some resistors. Um, pretty basic there. And the cool thing is the PCB whoops, will actually show you how to read these right on the PCB. It's amazing. So we'll put those aside. We have a um, red LED for power on indication and tuning indication. They say this does fluctuate in brightness with tune, so that'll be neat. And then in here we have two transistors. Um, let's see if I can open this up here. They said one is an audio amplifier transistor and the other one is a IC with 10 transistors built into it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get this open on camera nicely here. Okay, it's foil packed. I kind of tear into it here. Here we go. I'm going to see if I can get this into focus on the camera. This be, might be a hard thing to focus here. Look at that. Okay, so you can read those numbers, guys. Zoom it in. Zoom it in. It's about as close as I'm going to get. There you go. Okay, it's the TA. I think I have that written down in their manual. This is the one that has 10 transistors. This does everything for the AM radio kit. Um, pretty awesome right there. And, of course, this one here I think is for our amplifier circuit. And let's bring that up into the frame there and you get a good look at that. Yeah, so pretty basic. Those are all the parts uh, pretty much for building the radio. Uh, of course, we're missing the ferrite, and I think that was in the bag here. Let's go ahead and check that out. Here we are. It's in a bubble wrap. 
Not sure if it gives us any information. Looks like it's some Chinese part, but not a bad thing. Not upset by that because that's where most of these parts come from. But uh, let's see if we can't open that up on camera. Get my scissors out here. And we're just gonna cut this. See so if we can't slide that ferrite bar out of there. Okay, there it is. So this is gonna where our antenna's gonna wrap on. And for length of this antenna, you're looking at about four inch. Pretty awesome. Okay. So and that's that magnet wire you're gonna use right here. This wire, we're gonna wrap around that. We have to first isolate this. They talk about using masking tape to isolate it. And then they say, this is like the hardest part of the whole kit, is wrapping this properly. It didn't look that hard. Um, they showed it. You cover the entire thing with masking tape. Then you tape off one end of the wire, leave a little bit out, of course, so you can solder to the board. And then you come in in a certain distance, and you wrap it 37 times. And then over here, you'll have another lead coming out. Another gigantic inch, inch and a half, something like that. And then you'll uh, solder that to the board. So pretty simple uh, setup there. I'm not uh, too concerned with that. So they say it's the hardest part of the kit, so okay. Uh, let's get to the PCB. This is the fun. Yeah, I love this. Um, okay, this is going to be the front of the radio. Yeah, here it is. And all its glory. <laughs> the Morania, I love it. Um, or yeah, Moran Morania. I keep wanting to say it differently. Um, but yeah, there's the front. And there's your, your tuning, your volume on off, your speaker. Your LED is going to come through there. And look right there. Made in USA. Gotta love that. That's <laughs> that's what sold me on this radio. I saw that and I'm like, okay, we're gonna build this radio. So definitely an awesome setup. Now on the back, this is where the fun is. This is interesting. If you look, there's no holes for the components. It's all surface pads. They call this the Pittsburgh style. You take your component, and I should talk about it in the uh, in the book there, and I'll show you a little book in a second. Uh, you just bend it. And you bend the resistor up, you do like this little W, and you solder, you put a little solder on the board, and then you solder this little end in, and you do the same for the other side. So you'll make like a little W with the resistor, I don't know, I can show it to you. So it's about 1 16th, I made that a little big, but you make it a little smaller. They said they want spacing about 1 16th off the board. So you're keeping components off the board, um, that's kind of a neat idea. And then, of course, uh, this is neat. Use a surface mount it versus going through the board. Uh, they say it's good for ground plane to avoid uh, hand interference because this whole back plane is copper, so that actually protects you when you're putting your hand on the front from affecting the circuit on the back side. So there is the circuit. Let's see if we can see that. You can see there through the speaker grill how to read the resistors. They're talking about R1 and how to read it, uh, the capacitor values. It's a really neat setup. And then there you go. There's the placement showing the positions of all the components. I mean, you could build it from this, just the back of this. Um, of course, they give you good tips. These are the sides of the uh, enclosure. I have to break those off yet. And you can see how there's little solder pads to make the box. So when I'm done, this thing's going to have a cool enclosure. You can see it has screws there. And it's, it can be portable. Yeah, that's the best part. Um, and I think the other parts are the base and the back side. Yeah, so here's the bottom. It's where... This is going to fit on top of once we get our sides in place. So you can imagine that there. Okay, and then yeah, here are the little parts, the little side pieces that go out of the front. These are front and back, that's right. So then they show you, like, once you've sanded these, and once you get them fitted, you can take a black Sharpie to get the edges black to kind of match the, the theme. So, all right. Bring that forward. This is too cool to look at. <laughs> Loving that. So the book. Yeah, um, they don't give you a book. You just have to print it out off their website. This is the, uh, so I can get this on camera here without knocking it over. Uh, the assembly manual. So this is everything you need. I'm going to go ahead and just bring this camera up and show you a little bit about this. So, yeah, they talk about a little bit of history of the radio. Let's see right here. Talk about 1950s technology. And they called the boys' radios. <clears throat> I did not know about... Um, transistors and about tariffs we raised the price of these radios coming into our country if they had more transistors we would charge um, the companies more to bring them in from china and japan so that's interesting did not know that um, there's they're talking about pittsburgh construction and i'll show you that there so I'll flip this open here okay so um, they're talking about how it works first steps 
you guys can pause and read if you want. But of course, this is on their website. So they're talking about that uh, integrated circuit, the TA7642, which is 10 transistors. And it handles all those things. RF amplification, audio detection, automatic gain control. It's all in that one part, which is great. What we need is masking tape, fingernail polish. I'm not sure what that's for yet. I haven't found the instructions on that. Sandpaper, hobby knife, your soldering iron. Pretty basic uh, equipment that you usually would have by now. Uh, there you go, voltmeter, but not necessary. And there you go. So in the Pittsburgh method, you do give kind of a picture. There you go. They show the component. There's a resistor bent like a W, and they show it being soldered in on the surface like that and then cutting off the leads. So it should be pretty basic, just a very simple way of doing it. But the big deal was right here, the most challenging part of the assembly and most critical is winding the antenna. So I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I think it's going to go up pretty easy. So that's the book. And, you know, you can print this off and it's, I think, about 13 pages. It has a little checklist. And it even has pictures online. So you can see the finished product to see if yours kind of matches what's on the pictures. It's kind of nice to see that. Um, I don't have pictures printed here, but... Uh, this gives you a basic idea of what's going on. Alrighty, so that's the manual. Here is the front again. When I come back, <laughs> I'm going to have pictures of the build process. Hopefully this will be come out amazing. From everybody that's built this, they said it's like come comes out fantastic. Um, anybody uh, can put this together. They say it's a great first-time builder kit. So if you're looking for an AM radio and it's your first time building an AM radio, you want to do something different, um, this might be the one to give it a try. And the cool thing is you can modify this radio. A guy on there, he was showing different mods you could do. I'm going to build it per the directions. And then uh, later, if we want, we'll revisit this radio. And then we'll do the modifications I saw on the internet to make it more sensitive and more selective. So, but there it is. The Morania. I love that. Or, yeah, Morania. Excuse me. <laughs> it's always a challenge, you know. Morania. I love that name. It's a cool name. Solid state made in USA. Okay, so when I come back, I'm going to have pictures of the build process, and then we'll go ahead and review the radio and do a little tuning on it, see what we can find. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Here are pictures of the build process. In the first picture, I wrapped the 4-inch ferrite bar with 37 turns of 22-gauge enameled wire. I had to mask off the ferrite bar first, wrap the wire, and then anchor each side with some more masking tape. This went very easy. In the second picture, I had the variable resistor, an electric little capacitor, one disk capacitor, one resistor, a red LED, and the 9-volt power wire. This part is done to test delivery of power over the board. You can see how the LEDs lit up red there. Next the picture, I had the transistor, two disk capacitors, a resistor, and the audio transformer. I would have probably drilled a hole on each of the small anchoring tabs to make the flow of solder much easier. That or pre-tinned the underside of the tabs, which I did not do, and it required a hotter iron. Next picture, I added the speaker. Instead of using clear nail polish here, I used lock washers under the nuts. This next picture, I added three disc capacitors, two resistors, and the TA7642IC, tuning capacitor, and the ferrite antenna. Next picture, I added a 2-inch loop of wire on the right side of the antenna. This little 2-inch loop is very important. This actually tunes the gain of your radio, and if you have it off, the radio is completely off. So pay close attention to this little wire uh, and make this work. Now they do say in the instructions 1.5 inches, but 2 inches seem to work the best. This last picture, I built the enclosure. Now putting this together was not an easy feat. This was probably the hardest and most time consuming task of putting this radio together. I had to use a small nail file or needle file to scrape away and make those joints nice and even and perpendicular because they were all rounded edges on the inside so the box wouldn't fit together properly. So you take your time and use a nice file to make them nice and flat and the box will come nice and square. So let's go in front of us. Here's the radio, the Morania. Love it. Now, I heard people say Marania. I might be saying it wrong, but Marania sounds cool, so I'm calling it Marania. <laughs> um, so here's the radio. It's pretty cool. Um, like I was mentioning about the box construction, yeah, you can look at mine. It's pretty smooth. I mean, it's perfectly lined up because I took a file. I'll show you what I used. 
I used, this is the file I used, a needle file, square edged, and I just ran it every spot here where there's a spot where it notches, you had to square it off um, or it wouldn't fit because the rounded edges just weren't letting the boards fit nicely together. So if you want a perfectly square box, that's how you have to do it. Another good thing I did, you look here, you can see the battery. <laughs> I ditched the holder and I just stuck the battery with double-sided tape in there because um, the holder just wasn't working out for me. It was shorting, it was touching things up in here. So I just did that and I just taped on top of the battery some electrical tape so it doesn't short anything out. Um, it's an option. Again, this radio probably won't be in my pocket, so I'm cool with that. It'll probably be just laying like this, so the battery should probably never shift around or anything. So yeah, that's one thing to, to do. Let's go over dimensions here real quick. Um, we have size of five and three quarter inches. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have three and five eighths of an inch. We have a depth of one and three quarters of an inch, and that includes the front tuning knobs. Okay, there we go. Let's do a size comparison. I don't have another kit to show you, but you know we can bring out a little CZ pocket here to give you a general idea of size. I also have um, Skywave. There you go. And of course, what else do we have over here? We have Iron Man. He's the man with the master plan. He can do it like no one can. <laughs> so there you go, you get an idea. A deck of cards probably will fit right in the middle there. He's upside down, what's he gonna do? <laughs> All right, cool. Um, overall build, it was a lot of fun. Uh, that Pittsburgh style soldering, it's very interesting how that works. Um, you have to you know, bend the legs up in that W style, set the one leg in, solder it, and the thing about that is if you make a mistake with this, it's very easy to correct. Uh, I, I've never surfaced, I've never surface mounted, uh, you know, normal through hole components. And that's just a really neat thing because if you, you mess something up, it's easy to desolder or just touch a little heat and pull your component right off. So really easy to mod this thing. And we'll talk about mods here at the end, uh, which I'm thinking about doing with this radio. Now notice too, um, I didn't color my PCB. You could take a black uh, marker, permanent marker there. And make this all black, but I want to leave it original. I kind of like the uh, contrasted spots there. Some people don't. I think it's cool. Um, it shows that it's uh, custom. Loving it. Another thing I did here on the radio, if you look at this LED, um, it's set really nice in there. Um, I, in the directions, they don't show it like that. They show that thing pushed all the way up, and it would look kind of funny. I didn't like how it looked. So I set it down a little bit and left the legs long. So something to watch is probably why I had a problem with the battery. Because <laughs> you got you don't want to have your components sticking out too far down. Because if they would have made this uh, enclosure just a little thicker, um, it probably would have uh, alleviated that issue with the battery spacing. Uh, because this is pretty tight fitting in there for that battery. So tuning. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And you're pretty much just going to hear um, some strong stations. And that's about all we're going to hear. And then we'll talk about the custom mod you can do. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This should light up. I'm like it's mixed stations. Uh, I watch, I watch everything. I watch tons of it. So, and I like the La Liga too. I think it's kick ass. And then uh, I don't want to sit and watch the San Francisco 49ers defensive coordinator seven million times a night on Sunday night. Right. Five, As sent, all in stock, ready for immediate delivery. Plus, the sales professionals at Gary Lang are the most trusted and resourceful in the business. They'll find you the exact 2020 Subaru model that you're shopping for and provide you with expert consultation on your vehicle. So that first station was uh, 670 the score. This next station is 720 WGN. As you can see, this uh, scale does not line up to any of the stations. Um, lucky I'm finding any stations. And then we'll talk about those mods. Or you can do it online at GaryLangSubaru.com. And remember, if it doesn't say Gary Lang on the back, you probably paid too much. <laughs> Uh, you might hear a little squeal. It's normal. I mean, I've been still trying to tweak that little loop of wire to induce a better signal gain to the main antenna. It's pretty tricky. Oh, cool. So Savage Nation, that was 760 WGR Detroit, 300 miles. Uh, I heard Toronto last night with this. That's what I was trying to get.
There's music playing, and that's probably a uh, Zuma radio. Let's verify. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, enjoy this. This kid. Wow, this guy waved jamming away here. Uh, yeah, this kid's been a lot of fun. Good learning experience. Uh, I would recommend to anybody. So there you go. We got Zuma Radio, Toronto, Ontario, 460 miles. Sweet. So you know it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Loving it. This is 760. Uh, Detroit, Michigan, coming in clear. This is Carrie Little with the Main Street Organization of Realtors for News Radio 780 and 105.9 FM. Randview buys homes. Hi, this is Tom Detlich. If you're thinking about selling your home, I know exactly how you're feeling. You're dreading the painful process of fixing up the home, listing with a real estate agent, and then dealing with weeks. Okay, we're going to tune and see if we can hear anything else, and then we'll do some final thoughts. found that little bit of squeal I need, otherwise I don't get the gain um, on the fanner stations. This is uh, 1,000 to be MVP. Chicago station. So KDKA, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 450 miles. Sweet. <laughs> this was great. Wasn't getting this performance last night until I tweaked it. Little loop again. It's not coming in perfect, but... There we go. Same station on the end here, and I'm not sure if that's a strong station up top. Let's see if it's 1530. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but that gives you an idea. Let's go ahead and turn this off. All right, so the Morania, yes, I like it. 
like uh, just an awesome, awesome kit. I mean, the biggest thing I like about it right there, made in USA. Yeah, that's that's the coolest. Um, <laughs> you can't beat it. The guys at the, uh, uh, what is this, the four state QRP group? Yeah, they're amazing. Um, they've got really cool stuff. They have uh, QRP rigs. If you guys are into doing CW and low wattage and do-it-yourself kits and communications, that's the way to go. You know, check them out. They're really awesome. I have links down below. Uh, but mods, okay, so mods for this radio, they're there. And if you search on YouTube, there's a guy who did them already, talks about how he did it. If you uh, search on Google, there's a guy who does a whole write-up on how he did his mods. But I wanted to build this radio unmodded. What the mods pretty much do is add selectivity, dial accuracy, which is a big thing, and I believe extra gain on the audio. Because if you notice, I had to turn it way up to really hear anything. Um, so that's a bonus. So what you do, I believe, is you take that antenna and you wind it with 66 turns. I don't know if it's the same gauge wire. I think it is. Somebody said it's the same gauge. Somebody else said it was 24 gauge. I got to check on that to make sure. But you rewind the antenna to have almost twice the amount of wire. Okay. Uh, next, they have you um, remove a capacitor. I think it's C8 in there. So if you get this or if you look, you're looking at the you know, uh, schematic, you remove C8. I believe you lift the leg on one of the legs on the tuning capacitor. You, uh, I believe you bypass something on the audio spot, somewhere in the audio circuit. So there's a few things you do, and you get this radio that's transformed. So what I'm going to do, uh, probably in the next, uh, I'm not sure, next few weeks or so, I'm going to look into the, doing the mods and see if it's something that's easily performed. Uh, I do believe you have to change a resistor to a value from a certain value to a higher value. Um, so yeah, just a few little mods and it can make this radio a night and day difference. I really would like more selectivity, though I was really excited to pick up those stations 300-400 miles away for something very simple to put together as far as a basic radio kit. Um, it was a lot of fun. It made in USA all the way. <laughs> Loving it. Does it get recommended by? Yes, because it's very unique. Um, we're also going to get something like this. Just, I mean, I don't think some Chinese dude's going to make this. I hope not. <laughs> this is really nice. I mean, it's just, it's perfect. And, you know, just keep in mind, if you want that really nice look, um, invest in a nice needle file like this. And then start filing away nice and square on all your tabs. And then your case will fit perfect. Um, mine did. Pretty happy with it. Um, overall, real impressed with it. Very happy to own this. And really happy to get to modding it, too, for sure. So if you enjoyed the video presentation of the Morania or Morania, some people say it differently, I'm going to go with Morania um, AM Radio Kit. Give me a big like. You guys are awesome. Two, um, if you definitely love do-it-yourself radio kits, hit subscribe at the bell icon. Get notified of future radio kits. I got a few more lined up, um, but this one's very unique and special. And, of course, this one's going to get that uh, modded attention so you can see what it can do. And, of course, three, comment below what you think about the Morania Morania AM Radio Kit. This would be something you would chill out a few extra bucks for because... Keyword is Made in USA, and you're supporting a great team of people. Uh, they use the proceeds of this of the sale of this radio to fund their convention that they have every year, the Ozark Con. Not sure if you guys know about that, but it's in the Ozarks. I believe it's like Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Kansas or Iowa. I'm trying to remember the four states there, but it's a four state thing. So yeah, very cool setup. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for that video where I modify this and see what it can do. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you next video.